Hi. In my experience in teaching physics, most people have a great intuition for velocity. If I tell you that a car is moving at a speed of 60 miles per hour in a direction to the east, for example, then you know intuitively what that's like. You even know what it feels like. That's what I mean a lot of people have great intuition for velocity. It's acceleration we have to distinguish more carefully from velocity. So let's start with the definition. So acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity or using symbols to express the same idea more succinctly. We would say acceleration is equal to how much velocity changes in a given amount of time. And if we are being picky, we need to be careful about velocity being a vector. It has direction. So acceleration is also a vector. It has direction. So the definition is all well and good. The problem here is that a lot of physics students initially don't have a good intuition for acceleration. So you can memorize this definition but it takes some time for you to internalize this definition. And here's why this uh, distinction is important. Velocity and acceleration are how we describe motion. But when we say motion, the idea of motion is quite not precise enough. One thing you can see is that both the velocity and acceleration are somehow involved in motion. What we now have to carefully separate is different parts of motion that you have an instinctive, intuitive connection to and how those different parts are related to acceleration and velocity. I think here's one useful statement to make. Acceleration is how you feel motion. We'll see that in a little bit in more concrete examples. All right, let's just start out with some examples. I think it'll be useful to start out with an example where there is motion, but you don't quite feel it. A good example of that is an airplane ride. Or if you've never been on an airplane, you can imagine a BART or a subway ride. So imagine you are in an airplane. You know that the airplane is moving very fast. A lot of commercial airplanes will be fly at something like, let me make up a number that is pretty close, 700 miles per hour. But one of the strangest thing about airplane ride is that you don't really feel that. Now, if you haven't been on an airplane, then I want you to imagine that you've been on a BART ride. Now, BART doesn't move as fast as airplane. Maybe it moves said, I don't know, 70 miles per hour. Now, maybe you have been on BART and you don't feel like you didn't feel the motion. So this is where I want you to start making this distinction. Imagine the part of the BART ride as the train is moving at a constant speed. It just left the station. It reached the maximum speed of 70 miles per hour and the next station is a few minutes away, so it's continuing to move at 70 miles per hour. It's that portion of the motion that you don't quite feel it. You only feel that BART is moving when it's beginning to move or when it's coming to a stop. So this is an example of motion where acceleration is zero and the velocity is not zero. This is what I mean, acceleration is mostly what you feel in a motion. All right, let me move on to second example where you feel a lot of motion. I guess not many people would have this direct experience, but you can use your imagination. Imagine a car chase. Or you can imagine that you are riding with a particularly aggressive driver who's a speeding and changing lanes. Let's say as this car's being chased or chasing, it's weaving in and out of traffic, changing lanes a lot. Then you can imagine what that feels like. You will be jolted back and forth in the car. 
as it speeds up and slows, you'll be pushed back, pulled forward. You've been in a car, you know what that feels like. Well, maybe not exactly what a chase feels like. You know what the milder version of that feels like. So this is the case where velocity is not zero because car is moving and the acceleration is not zero either because the velocity is constantly changing and acceleration is given by change of velocity. So as the velocity of the car changes, you have this non-zero acceleration. So for example, at this point, the car had a velocity like this and at this point, car has a velocity like this. At this point, car has velocity like this. So you can see that even if the car was moving at the same speed, because the direction of its motion is changing, its velocity is changing, and that change of velocity will be associated with an acceleration. And actually, this is a lot closer to our everyday experience. And I think this is why in our intuition, the how we feel motion and which part of the parameter, velocity or acceleration is responsible, it's mixed up because in most of our everyday experience, it's all mixed up. So intuitively, we don't quite know whether to credit the velocity to the, our sensation of motion or credit acceleration for our sensation of motion. Now, I don't know how many of you have been to Universal Studio, or I guess there could be other theme parks that do this. There are machines called motion simulators. And what the motion simulator simulates is the acceleration. You can kind of see that from outside. When you look at the motion simulator from outside, its velocity is more or less zero. It's not going anywhere, but it's uh, jerking back and forth and it's tilting. So it's causing acceleration for people inside. And if you're sitting inside, you're looking at the screen, some video that's consistent with the motion you're supposed to be feeling. And it's a very realistic feeling. It's because our sensation of motion is based on acceleration. So I hope this example is helping you realize that when you are feeling motion, what you should look out for is acceleration, not velocity. But it is a fact that so much of our intuition about motion is tied in with velocity. We feel like if something is not moving, velocity zero, that there's no motion happening. So, I want to end with the last example where there is no motion in the sense that velocity is zero, but there is acceleration. To crystallize that you can have acceleration with zero velocity. And even though you would be feeling motion at that particular moment in time, the velocity is zero. So I don't really have a good name for this, so let me just call it non-zero acceleration with zero velocity. So imagine you are in a car which is stopped at a signal light. The light is red, so the car is not moving. Its velocity is zero. And since it remains at zero, its acceleration is also zero. You don't feel like it's moving. Now at time equals zero, the light changes from red to green. And the car starts to move forward. And you feel this motion. If you step on the accelerator, the pedal hard enough, you will feel thrown backward in the car. That's how you're feeling the motion. Now, this is the question I want you to consider. At time equals zero, when the light just uh, turned green, what is the velocity of the car? Uh, tempting to say that the velocity of the car is also greater than zero. After all, isn't it moving forward? But what you have to carefully consider is that we are looking at time equals zero. This is the moment at which light turned from red to green. Now, let me do a little bit of math here. I can take this definition here and turn it into a statement about the change of velocity. 
So the change of velocity is acceleration times duration of time. So before time equals zero, your acceleration was zero. So no matter how long you wait, change in velocity would have been zero. Now at time equals zero, the duration of time over which acceleration was that zero has been zero. That's the exact moment at which acceleration flipped from being zero to non-zero. So what that means is there haven't been enough time for the velocity to have changed. So at time equals zero, velocity still is zero. So this is the first very common everyday experience where you feel the motion, you have non-zero acceleration, but you have zero velocity. Now, what you should notice is that this moment is very fleeting. Another moment, a second, fraction of a second later, your velocity won't be zero. Because with non-zero acceleration, as you accumulate change of time, you will accumulate change in velocity. So all these examples will be very momentary, fleeting. Now, let me give you one more example of non-zero acceleration with zero velocity. I have this ball here. When I throw it up and catch it, at the very top of the motion is another example of where it has non-zero acceleration with zero velocity. So let's say at the bottom, I throw it up with a velocity of 5 meters per second. Then about half a second later, at the top, the ball would have a velocity of zero. And then another half a second later, the ball will have come down and it'll be moving downward at five meters per second. And this is the rough trajectory of this ball. So at that exact moment, when the ball is at the top, its velocity is zero. I can say that its velocity is zero without actually measuring it from this argument. If it had positive velocity, it would be moving upward more. If it had negative velocity, it would be moving downward. So by the fact that it's at the very top, its velocity has to be zero because it's neither moving upward nor downward. And I'm saying that this is an example where acceleration is not zero. Now, how do I know that acceleration is not zero at the top? Maybe it's zero, like velocity was zero. Well, here's how I can argue that the acceleration at the very top is not zero, even though velocity is zero. It's uh, because of the change of velocity. The moment before it reached the top, the ball was moving upward, so it had a positive velocity. And the moment after reaching the top, the ball will be moving downward, so it has a negative velocity. So because of that continuous change in velocity, I know even at the very top, the velocity is still changing. And because this velocity is changing, that means acceleration is not zero at the top. So these are some examples distinguishing between acceleration and velocity. And I hope this is giving you enough concrete examples for you to be able to distinguish between these two things, acceleration and velocity, in your own thinking. I will tell you that this is a simple concept once you get it. But until you understand, because there's so much your natural intuition working against this correct distinction, that it'll take effort for you to get it. So uh, if you have any questions that come up, please email me. And one resource that you have that may be useful for you is the pre-unit one discussion questions that you answered that reflects how much you knew about motion before you started reading chapter two. So going back to your answer there, comparing that with what the textbook says about acceleration and velocity will help you start to clarify what it is that you may not have understood before. And that'll be the beginning of aligning your physical intuition with how we describe our natural world. Thank you for watching through the end of this video and bye.